I started working at my local grocery last year, at the start of lockdown. I used to clean dishes for a restaurant, but since it had to close and I needed some extra cash, a friend was able to get me a position restocking shelves and manning the cash register. We're a small store, but we're open 24-7. This is because our town is seated at a crossroads in the middle of nowhere, so we get a lot of late night, early morning travellers passing through. I think we probably sell more coffee at night than anything else during the day. Anyway, that's enough location setting. I'd been working for a few weeks, both day and night shifts, with no real incidents, other than the odd weird customer passing through and freaking me out in the early hours. But it was within that first month I started to get a little... suspicious. While working alone, occasionally the lights would flicker, vents would rumble, or something would fall off a shelf randomly, with zero prompting. At first, I thought it was just traffic passing by all day and gradually vibrating the cans and stuff to fall. But then, one night I was working, I heard a can fall, so I went to pick it up. I get to the spot where it landed, checked it over, seemed fine, so I go to put it back on the shelf, and right there in front of my eyes, one of the cans suddenly juts out into mid-air, and then drops. Almost like someone grabbed it, held it up to my face, and then let go. I remember just standing still and thinking, did that just happen? Then I looked down and... Yep. There's a can on the floor. I cleared up, got back to my duties, and figured it was just a freak, one-off situation. But as much as I tried to shrug it off, whenever something happened, I started looking at it with a little more... paranoia. The lights, the vents, and of course, stuff falling, left me a little more on edge. I rarely had a night shift where something didn't happen, and I'd spend the whole time feeling like I was being watched. Did I say anything about it to anyone? Nope. Why? Because I didn't want to say anything in case I seemed crazy or overworked. Then I was nervous I would lose my job or had to reduce my hours. I really needed the money, and I thought I could just push on through it. After all, Nothing particularly bad had happened so far, so I figured I could handle it. Then, one night shift, everything came to a head. The manager and I talked for a while. He handed me the keys and then headed home, just as it's getting dark, leaving me alone. Or at least, that's what I'd hoped. For hours, everything was fine. Had some regulars pass through and one or two I'd not seen before. The shift was moving along pretty well. I took inventory, swept the floors, and made sure there was plenty of coffee in the machine. It's so easy to get bored during the long early morning hours, so I'd play a podcast or some music. I tried Let's Not Meet and No Sleep a couple of times, but got crazy paranoid whenever I'd look outside into the pitch black, as if there was someone watching me from the dark and I just couldn't see them. I was playing some music on my phone this time, and I left it under the counter briefly as I went to the back room. I could hear the faint, tinny sound of music breaking up, so I went to get it, when it just stopped. The screen flashed for a few seconds and then just turned off. I tried over and over again to get it to start, but nothing. It was only then I realised just how quiet and still everything was. I really didn't want to look outside, afraid I'd see someone staring back at me. But outside wasn't what I needed to be worried about. I tried the computer, but it was off too. Then I heard it, a noise coming from the vents. It was like a painful moaning sound, but kind of metallic as well if that makes any sense. Quiet at first, but gradually growing, until I could hear it from all around me. The lights started flickering, and suddenly I heard a loud bang. I looked around, and through the flashing lights, I could see it. 
all of the items on shelves and in the fridge were rising and dropping again and again, making a haunting drumming noise. Amongst the groaning from the vents, the whole thing sounded like a sacrificial ceremony, and I was caught in the middle of it. The lights went out completely and I couldn't take any more, so I ran for the exit. But the door wouldn't open. I tried the keys, but the lock wouldn't move. I threw myself against the door to try to get it to open. Instead, it started to shake furiously. I stepped back and a loud bang came from behind me. The door to the back room had slammed shut. My heart was in my throat when the door slowly started opening and then slammed shut again. I thought about making a run for the back door, but I was terrified there might have been something in the back room waiting for me to enter. I couldn't move. For a moment, I thought it was the fear of me being trapped, but it was more than that. I could feel a pressure holding me, squeezing me, not letting go. It was getting tighter, and I could feel my breathing getting shorter. I thought I was going to die, dropped and left on the shop floor without anyone being able to know what it was that killed me. With what little breath I had left, I just about managed to rasp out. Stop! My vision was blurring. I couldn't breathe. All I could do now was wait for it to be over. A light appeared. In fact, all of them did. The whole shop was illuminated. The pressure all around me was gone and I dropped to the floor. Lying there, I inhaled so hard I almost choked. Still dizzy, I tried to pick myself up. Instead, I ended up crawling outside and just waited. I don't know what for, but I did not want to go back inside yet. While standing in the dark, I noticed my phone had turned back on, continuing the song from where it had been cut off earlier. I wanted to call someone, but what was I going to say? Eventually, I found the courage to go back in. I did a sweep of the whole place, and nothing was out of order. The computer was fine, so were all of the items and snacks. I couldn't believe it. I checked the security cameras, hoping they caught everything, but they had cut out at the same time as my phone from the looks of things, and turned back on just as I was trying to stand up from the floor and scramble outside. Nothing else happened. The rest of the shift was quiet. Didn't even get another customer until 5am. When I was relieved, it must have been clear how shaken up I was, because my manager kept asking if I was okay. I just told him I was tired and went home. I couldn't believe what happened. How the hell would I expect anyone else to? I found another job as a delivery driver soon after, so I don't work there anymore. Hell, I don't even get my groceries from there anymore. Now, you're probably thinking, that place definitely sounds haunted. So why would you say, thought? It was haunted. Well, funnily enough, that's related to my new job. I was making my rounds when I got talking to one of the locals. He's an older resident. He asked why I stopped working there and I straight up said, because it's haunted. And I told him some of the creepy things that happened. He just chuckled and said, that place ain't haunted. I was taken back a little considering everything that happened and tried to re-explain some of the things I'd seen. Nah, there's tunnels underneath that place. Under the whole town, in fact. I was confused. I'd lived here my whole life and never heard about this. So I pressed him for more information. He explained how this was back during the war. The government set up a post here because of the town's unique location or something, and it was used for discreet military purposes. Although he wasn't sure it got much use, as military personnel barely ever came through, 
but there was always supplies being dropped off. He summed up by saying, The tunnels they built always caused problems in town. Blackouts, broken pipes. Locals were always getting the short end of the stick. And even years later, still we got no idea what those tunnels were really used for. So the government's been living underneath our town for decades and no one talks about it. That's not exactly comforting, I joked. Ah, I wouldn't worry, he said. They closed that place down years ago.